I wanted to take a little bit of time today to talk about one of the most important things and something that's near and dear to my heart in that small businesses. Hey, what's up guys? Happy Friday. I'm Rob Luna. Welcome to Wealth Talk. I wanted to take a little bit of time today to talk about one of the most important things and something that's near and dear to my heart in that small businesses. And I was just on Fox Business a few minutes ago talking about what this current administration is doing to absolutely demolish small businesses. And in my view, really the fiber of what makes America such a great place to live, work, succeed, and why for decades upon decades around the world, we've been that shining beacon of hope for people to come into our country, start small businesses and create generational wealth and opportunity for themselves and their families. But for some reason, this current administration does not believe that you, that the small business owner is smart enough to be able to do that for themselves and that we need government subsidies and we need the government to be able to hold our hand and tell us what we need to do. You know, just look at what's going on right now, for example, if you don't believe that capitalism works in, inside of uh, Cuba. People are rising up, pushing back against the government over there. They've turned off completely the internet. So this is being done in a grassroots effort, door to door, street by street. People are tired of not being able to control their own destiny. And when you look at the Latino community that's out there, you know, a large percentage of them in uh, the Miami area in particular uh, are, are voted Republican in the past. Why? Uh, not really to be so political, uh, right? It's not to believe, oh, probably Republicans are better than Democrats, but these are people that understand that socialism does not work. They want opportunity. And when you look at what's going on with that state of Florida, for example, the growth in Florida is, is outstanding. More businesses are starting to move into Florida now. You're seeing financial service companies. You're seeing Goldman Sachs, Blackstone opening up places there. You've seen HP uh, starting to go out of there from Silicon Valley. You're seeing Oracle looking at places in Miami. And so when you take a look at that, at what's going on, why is that happening? Well, the Miami uh, community, the Florida in general, when you look at Senator Scott, when you look at Rick DeSantis, when you look at what's going on with Miami's mayor, they are incentivizing people to work. They're incentivizing people through no state income tax. They're incentivizing people through alternative currencies like cryptocurrencies. They understand that capital is going to go where it's treated best. They understand that people, when you give them money, when you give them opportunity, are much more innovative, much more creative, much more productive than the U.S. government, right? And so when you start talking about right now what's going on with this current administration and you start to see things like lawsuits um, to be able to can have the continuation of more unemployment benefits, when you're talking about some of the tax codes to where we're now going to tax capital gains at a higher rate, this is great politics. It's great news clips, tax the rich. But what they're really doing with all of this, with all this policy, everything we see going on right now is they're incentive people, incentivizing people who don't work, who are lazy to stay home. I just said on Fox Business, we're paying people to play Nintendo now so they don't have to work. Why? Well, what you see is minimum wage workers, low entry workers, people are just getting started, right? They're getting paid more to sit home now with tax-free unemployment benefits. So why go back to work if you could sit home and collect more? Especially, you know, I know, do you think they're not doing things under the table on the side? So now they're being incentivized to stay home. Don't go back to work. And the people that this government has crushed with mask mandates, with shutdowns, the small businesses, restaurants, boutique hotels, small retail shops, the people who we profess as government to be helping, we're killing those people. We're shutting down their businesses. We're putting more and more restrictions, more and more barriers for them to even be able to compete with big business. 
And now in terms of labor, we're telling them, uh, you know, Biden came out the other day and said, well, just pay more. You want good labor, pay more. We kept you shut down for two years. We don't let your restaurants be open. We make you have your restaurant out in the parking lot where you can only sit a quarter of the amount of people now. But now that we've done that to you for a year and a half, why don't you just pay people more? So they do not understand what's going on. And what you, this is not political. I'm an independent. This is a statement to understand if you want this country to be good, if you want this country like I do to be great and be that shining beacon of hope where this is the land of opportunity again, we need to understand that the incentives for people to stay home, for people to get more free stuff have to change. And we have to start incentivizing and rewarding the behavior that is productive people that are taking risks. You know, I've been a small business owner since 2002. I create jobs for people. You know how I do that? I take a lot of risk. I've had a lot of debt in my life like other small business owners. I use credit cards to make sure that I can play my employees. And you know how they want to thank those people now? The people that go ahead and build those small businesses. Because look, if they're not successful, guess what? The government doesn't give them anything. But when they're successful and they're able to sell part of their business after years and years and years, well, what they're saying now is on capital gains tax, which they're telling you is for the rich, which is actually how small business owners get taxed. Let's move that up to ordinary income. And if you're in a state like California, where you're paying an additional 12%, let's have you paying 55, 60% of every single dollar that you get when you sell that business. Now, how is that going to incentivize people to take risk? How is that going to incentivize people to go out and build business? And you know what they're going to do with that tax money is more government handouts. They're talking about free college now for people, free community college. I went to college. I had student loans. I'm still paying off student loans. I have not at one point in my life thought that somebody else should be responsible for my education. You know what happens when you create those kind of policies, when you have incentivized people to have no skin in the game? You don't have to look back too far. Look at 2006, 2007, right? We were giving people free money, free loans to go out and buy homes, no money down, no income, no asset verification. And when those things were going up, that was great. You cash in. When everything turned down, guess what happened to the people that had no skin in the game? They defaulted. The homes went into to foreclosure, they gave them away. And then what happened was at that time, the current administration said, hey, same type of policy we're dealing with now back then was, hey, go ahead and we'll let you foreclose on, we'll let you short sale that home. And normally the difference of what they forgave in terms of the loan that you still owed in terms of the negative equity, you had to pay taxes on that. But that administration had this great idea of go ahead and short sell. We'll do a forgiveness of indebtedness. So now you just walk away free and clear. And guess what happened? They all walked away. The homes got sold off. The people like you and I who are working our ass off, paying our mortgage, actually had equity in our home. Those are the people that suffered. Those are the people that got crushed again as we watched our home prices go down. We continued to pay our mortgage. We showed up to work, right? So you have to realize there's a long history of disincentivizing uh, work, disincentivizing risk. And when, when you do that, you're not going to create more jobs. Look, small businesses are creating half the jobs in the country today. 63% of the growth in jobs is coming from small businesses. We need to start supporting these people. We need to forget about free community college. What's going to happen then? Free college, you get in there for a year, you don't like it, you bail out, doesn't cost anything. People have to have skin in the game. You need to understand no matter what your political views are is that capital is gonna go where capital is treated best. People are gonna work where they're treated best. That's why jobs are moving out of New York, Wall Street, Silicon Valley, moving jobs, going to places like Florida, Florida who appreciate that capital, who incentivize that capital. And so when you start thinking about that again, if you're somebody who's watching me, you're watching me because you don't want to sit on and pay Nintendo. You want nice things. You want to be able to send your kids to the school that you want. You want to be able to take the trips that you want. You want the house that you want. You need to stand up, just like we're seeing happen in Cuba, against what's going on, against policy. Even if you're somebody, when I was making 20, 30 grand a year, I never looked at other people and said, take from them and give to me. All I said was, give me that same opportunity. I want that opportunity. When I got there, guess what? 
Now I'm upset. I don't want to, you know, pay 50 or 60% taxes on money that I work my ass for. Nobody does, right? I want to be able to take that money that's going to the government that they're absolutely wasting. And if you think they're doing anything other than wasting it, you're living on a different planet. I want to create new jobs. I want to pay my people that show up and work 60, 70 hours a week in my small businesses to be able to help them achieve. I want to pay them more so they could do more for their family, right? So what I just wanted to get back to you today was, this is wealth talk. The idea is you all are going to be wealthy, but you all need that opportunity to go out there and be incentivized to take the risk that you need to become wealthy. Because look, if you don't take any risk, there's not going to be any reward. And what you have to understand right now is what this current administration is talking about in terms of their policy is disincentivizing risk. It's uh, making it very prohibitive for small businesses to compete with big businesses. So start thinking, this is all about education. The great thing about education is it opens your mind. It causes you to question things and just start thinking in a world where you make a half a million, a million dollars, two million more because you're taking risk, because you're making sacrifice. What do you want policy to look like? Don't think of where you're at now. And if that policy is different from what you see today, you need to cast a vote. You need to stand up. You need to go to your local government and talk to them. So at the end of the day, wealth is going to go where it's treated best. We need to value small businesses. We need to value risk takers. Otherwise, China is going to eat our lunch. This is Wealth Talk. I'm Rob Luna. Have a great week.